Hello, my name is Emily Crow from Crochet Creations and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my crochet and knitting podcast, episode 12. We are cruising right along. This podcast is a week later than I typically film because I was out of town. And so I figured I would just get started back up on my every other week schedule, starting when I got back from my trip. We can talk more about that later, but I just wanted to welcome you. For those of you who have been here before, I'm so glad that you're back and I hope that you enjoy seeing the things I've worked on previously as well as some new items and for those of you who are new I'm so glad to have you and I hope that you decide to stick around if you like this kind of content from me then definitely make sure to like and comment down below so others can find my content easier and to subscribe so you can be notified when I post new videos I do a podcast every other week and then on my off weeks I do a different type of video whether it's a yarn vlog review uh, whether it's a yarn vlog, a process video, a review of some sort of product, things like that. Anything that's in the realm of yarn things, I like to do. When I'm not filming my podcast, I like to explore all things yarn. So definitely make sure to check out my channel to see more from me. So a little bit about what's been happening over here at Crochet Creations. Like I said, we were out of town. My husband took a work trip to Phoenix, Arizona area for about a week and we decided that myself and my daughter would come along. So we got a plane ticket for me and we brought Georgia on our lap and we went down there. My husband unfortunately was working night shift which was kind of tricky in a lot of ways. We were able to still have some fun down there and we really enjoyed the area. There's lots of fun things to do and lots of things we enjoyed. It was very warm, which is also very nice and a change of pace from being in the Bay Area of California, which is where we live right now. So we had a really good time. And then the week before that, my family was in town and they were visiting us. So we were busy enjoying getting out and doing things with them. And so we've had a full couple of weeks. I do have a vlog where I shared my I like mini yarn store crawl with my mom. We went to two local yarn stores to me, Fillory Yarn and Uncommon Threads that are both in the Bay Area. We hit up those stores and I share my haul in a video. I'll make sure to link it up above as well as down below so you can check that out. And I'll talk a little bit about that yarn in this video too, a little bit later. So we've had a really fun time. We were able to go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium with them and spend some time at the beach just enjoying being in the sun, being on the sand, just a lot of good family time. It's hard not living close to family. And so we really appreciate any time that we can get together for a little bit and do visits. So that was really, really nice. Going back to our trip last week when we were in Phoenix, I was able to go to two local yarn stores in Phoenix and I filmed a week in my life vlog on things yarn and other things outside of yarn, just kind of how I balance my time during our week. So I'll be coming out with a vlog soon, but in that vlog I share about my trips to Tempe Yarn and Fiber as well as Phoenix Knits. So those are two yarn stores in the Phoenix area. So I went to both of them and I actually went to Tempe Yarn twice. More on that later. I share my experiences with those yarn stores in an upcoming vlog. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in seeing a week in my life on vacation and see how successful I was at meeting my goals and using the things I brought because I brought a lot. Let's just get started on finished objects. I hope that I'm successful at filming right now because my daughter is currently awake and bouncing in her crib instead of going down for a nap. I hope that she falls asleep quickly so that we can get through this content right now and I can share everything that I've been working on, new yarn I've got, all the good things, but we shall see because toddlers are very unpredictable. <laughs> First and foremost, let's talk about what I'm wearing. You can only see a little bit. Let me show you a little bit better. I finished my Brookline blouse from Mezzo Makes. This is a scrappy project using some leftover scraps from Hobby Lobby. I no longer shop there, so I wanted to use up what I had and I definitely made it a longer top. I used up my scraps and I faded in from super light all the way through black and then into the red because the red has a lot of black specks in it. So I use up a ton of scraps which is awesome for this project. This is on my stash make nine list so if you haven't seen that yet I'll make sure to link that up above as well as down below. This has been a really really fun easy project to work on. It's worked up really fast. It's a DK weight pattern 
The yarn I had was labeled as a DK, but definitely very thin. In order to get gauge, I had to hold it double, which was very annoying. <laughs> so I ended up buying some yarn scraps from a friend online in order to make sure I had enough for this top and I still have some of those scraps left. Uh, that is a tip for you if you are wanting to do some stash busting and maybe use up your yarn in a more eco-friendly way. You can consider swapping or buying scraps or stash yarn from other people rather than buying newly produced yarn. Uh, I share some other more eco-friendly tips for using up your yarn stash in my Earth Day video that I just came out with so you can definitely check that out up above or down below but that's what I did and I'm really glad I did that because in order to get the length I wanted I definitely needed to dip into that yarn from my friend I have more leftovers so I need to figure out what to do with it but at least it's all the same color right now <laughs> my leftover stash so I can hopefully figure out something to do with that I'm happy with how this turned out I'm not normally like a scrappy person Per se like I don't enjoy wearing scrappy project as much but this is really fun really fun to work on learned a couple new techniques and stitches it was a different kind of construction it was a raglan but raglan with the V so you'd increase and do the shaping and then you join together and continue to the top did a ruffle the sleeves I did a little bit differently than how the pattern is written and I'll make sure to link it down below but in Ravelry you can actually see different people's projects for a pattern and sometimes those people will leave notes about any modifications they made to the pattern and I love checking those notes in order to get ideas for how I want to modify the pattern or if I know I want to modify but I'm not quite sure the best way to go about I like to browse the projects one person shared in their project how they made the sleeves not quite so open because they were just like way too open and flowy for me so I was able to follow their instructions and I also followed the bind off that they shared which is some kind of like a flowy bind off in them in order to just make them still a little bit a little bit frilly it's a frill to bind off a frill to bind off in order to make them a little bit frilly and still feminine and match the ruffle on the bottom and vibe but to not be quite so open because they were really like open and loose and now this is much more comfortable for me like I said I lengthened it quite a bit I had to lengthen it an inch just to get to my natural waist but I didn't want it so cropped and so I did another four inches beyond that so I lengthened it five inches so it's definitely not cropped I know that this is the right length for me because I wear it I just wanted to make sure that it was long enough I was able to finish this on our trip to Arizona so that was super fun to be able to have an FO there this yarn is acrylic so it doesn't have quite the same drape and doesn't really block the same way so I did some steam blocking to it to help with this frilled edge as well as the ruffle and to help the neckline in the back lay down a little bit better since it's curling a little bit and I was able to make that work so it definitely helped though because it's you know acrylic is plastic the steaming heats up the yarn and so it definitely doesn't look quite the same but I don't think it's necessarily too noticeable and like with wear and kind of pulling at the stitches I think they look better now than they did immediately after steaming I'm happy with how it is and I'm excited to wear this for the summer and to have a summer top that fits me well it turned out how I envisioned and so I'm happy about that so I had to wear that since I just finished that and wow I've been talking about this for a very long time so I apologize we'll move on another FO that I have to show you is the weekend waffle baby sweater by Woolburn and this was partly a stash project I had this color let's see it's your inspirations Karen cotton cakes in the color sunset dreams I didn't realize I guess how much yardage I would need when volunteer for the test and so I ended up having to buy another skein of the yarn which is okay I have less of that yarn now than I did before I started this project so it's okay it's okay I'll have to just figure out what to do with the rest of that this is the sweater and it's got a beautiful texture that was actually kind of fun to do and and learn a new texture it's an oversized sweater I made the 2t definitely too big for my daughter she's just barely moving into 2t size but the sleeves are a bit long because it is a drop shoulder and so it's just it's long and the neckline is too loose I think I'll go back and I'll alter the neckline the designer made a lot of changes to the pattern based on testing and so it'll be a little bit different shaped and sized when the pattern is available so definitely keep an eye out for that I think that's 
really fun. It's made for cotton yarn, so it's good for a not as warm sweater, but maybe like a springtime or fall sweater would be really great. Super cute colors for spring, definitely. I had it done in time for Easter, and then it was too big, and it was too warm here, so she didn't really wear it <laughs> for Easter, but I'm glad to have that done. It was my last test that I really needed to finish, so I'm glad to have that off my plate. It's a nice weight lifted because it's one less thing that I have to have to do. It's nice to have deadlines and to give yourself goals for what you want to work on, but if you have too many external deadlines, then that can be stressful. So I'm glad that this external deadline has been met and we are done. I'm gonna, you know, fix the neckline and then I'm going to save this for when she's just a little bit bigger, maybe by the end of this year when things start to cool down again, then she can wear this. And then my last FO, really quick, is just an Erica Beanie by Naughty Hooks. So I used some Premier Yarn. Oh, I don't have my yarn information. Yeah, it's by Premier Yarn and it's this pretty colorway. I actually have it right here, I just remembered blues and greens super pretty it's pulling out just a little bit it's super pretty I made that for a custom order I think I just had part of the brim left to do I was really close to finishing when I showed it on my last podcast but it is done it is with the client now and they love it and they sent me a picture and said that I could post about it so I wanted to share it I was really happy I was having a hard day on social media when she sent me that picture and so that warmed my heart and I was really happy to see that. I do like doing custom orders and knowing that people are really loving what I make them and even though I'm kind of in the mood to turn away from custom orders right now because of my time and capacity, I do really enjoy doing them and being able to fulfill those needs. So I'm glad that I finished that. Okay, so I've got quite a few whips to show you, and first I will address my Find Your Fade shawl because I did not work on it at all. Like, zero. Zilch. Nada. Nothing. I didn't do anything on it. So, I'm sorry. I have other things going on, and I did not bring this project with me on my trip to Arizona, but if I had, I probably would have worked on it a bit. That's okay. That's fine. We will do better next time. It's been a longer term project. I started it in February and I've just been slowly going through it and it'll get done eventually. I need to pick up the pace with it for sure, but it will get done eventually and <laughs> that's okay. But I wanted to share with you my last custom order that was in my queue that I'm almost done with so then I can be done with custom orders. These custom orders, I get them at my market. I've been at a farmer's market, the Cambrian Park Plaza market in San Jose occasionally on Saturdays and I'm feeling ready to be done with markets for this season. It's not worth my time at the moment to go because I'm just not getting enough customers but this is where I'm getting most of these custom orders and so I have one more custom order this coming Saturday I think will be my last at Cameron Park Plaza for a while and I am so happy with how this is going because it was really feeling like a slog and like it was taking forever because this is crocheted and fingering weight yarn. It's a little bolero cardigan. It's my own design. I used the client's measurements. Simple cardigan with this beautiful detailing along the inside. That's so hard to see. Can you see that a little bit better? Almost like a scalloped edge, but a little bit different, which I did on the end of the sleeves as well as on the inside front panels. It's a fun little detail. I am on the second sleeve right now, and I have all my decreases marked on my first sleeve, so I can just copy, so it should go pretty fast. I'm almost done. I'm so excited. I was worried I wouldn't finish in time, but I busted this out and worked so hard on it the week that my family was here, as well as, like during car rides and stuff, as well as on our trip to Arizona. I got a lot of work done. So I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Let me know if you'd be interested in me actually writing a, a legit pattern for this and sizing it and all that good stuff. This is a bolero. Clearly this is not for me. It's for a small Filipino woman. She is more of an extra small to a small and I am a medium for sure. So this is not for me. But let me know if you'd be interested in me actually writing up a pattern for this and doing like testers and whatnot. I'm not sure what yarn I would use. Maybe some really beautiful tonal hand dyed yarn. Let me know if you'd want to see a pattern from me. I was thinking, oh, this isn't necessarily my style, but the more I've been working on it and the more I've been looking at it, I'm like, I would totally wear a cardigan that looked like that. <laughs> it just would need to 
actually fit me. That would be really cool. Maybe that's something for me to think about. Okay, and then another project that I got a ton of work done while I was in Arizona. This is the Daily Socks by Summerly Knits, and I actually got a ton done. I did not expect to get this much done. This was like a last minute, like, eh, I'll bring this project, but I finished a sock, which is awesome. I think this is where my marker was. I did all of that on Sunday, and I don't have a marker, but I finished the cuff leg and then maybe half of this heel flap I have here, like right maybe to there, all on Sunday. I did a ton on Sunday while we were in Arizona because I didn't have any other fun projects to work on. All I had was like work and custom order type projects, designs, whatnot, and so I choose not to work on those on Sunday, and so this is the only thing I had, so that's all I worked on, like, monogamously, and I got a ton done, so reminding myself that I love working on socks, and they don't take that long if you just take the time to work on them, so I just need to spend more time working on my socks, because I do enjoy them. This marker, oh, it's a little hard to see, this marker is by Hello Lavender, it says, I am enough from our affirmations collection. And then the little daisy too, to mark the beginning of my foot. I'm making good progress on this. I'm hoping to finish the heel flap and the heel turn today and then do a little reel showing me pick up stitches along the gusset. Just kind of chug along with that. That's been really fun. I'm so happy with how these are working up. Oh, I don't think I ever said, this is in Olivia and Oliver fibers in the eggnog, whoop, in the eggnog colorway. And then this mini, the contrast is called caramel so fun i love this texture it's vanilla plus it's been really really fun to work up Wah. it's all about socks right now so let me share with you another sock whip i think i mentioned this before but i wanted to do a newborn pair of my mountains call socks i'll pop up a picture of my pattern so it is finishing up testing this week and then hopefully next week i will have it out and available for you. I wanted to make a newborn pair of these socks so that I could add that size into the pattern, but also my sister-in-law is having a baby boy this summer and I thought it would be so fun to give him a pair of handmade socks. So I wanted to make a pair. I'm telling you all this so that you can understand why I made the decisions I did, even though right now I'm not quite so sure about it. Anyway, so I made a newborn sock. I wasn't quite sure size-wise what to do. I decided to just do a ribbed tube sock all the way down so that it could just bend and mold to wherever his heel is. Since baby socks are hard to keep on, they're really pudgy, they don't flex their foot like a normal person does. And so it didn't seem as important to me to have an actual like heel flap and gusset. So I'm just doing like a ribbed texture all the way around instead of just on the front of the sock in order to accommodate that. And then as he grows, his heel can move farther and farther back in the ribbing and the sock will still fit him until his chubby little leg is too big for the color work section. All that to say, I made this sock and I was really happy with it until I realized that it kind of looks phallic. I'm not a fan of how this looks, I will tell you. It's ribbed all the way around, just two by two rib, which is what the pattern is written in. I've got my color work, looks pretty good. I used some stash yarn and so not my ideal choice, but they are a good choice of colors. And I decided to just do green for the rest to blend from the trees and to do the rest of the sock like that so that I could use up the mini I had for the cuff. Overall happy with the color work. It's not perfect. The rest of the sock, it's just, it doesn't look right. I don't have a baby sock blocker, but I think I may try to buy one or 3D print one because my husband has a 3D printer so that when I give this sock to my sister-in-law, it can be on a blocker and it's clearly, clearly a baby sock, right? That's kind of my idea. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. So I will let you know what I end up doing. This is just the first sock. So I need to make the second sock. I'm planning on filming some tutorial reels for color work on the second sock. And then once I finish the second sock, then I really gotta figure out what to do about this visual problem. Let me know what you would do to solve that problem because I chose the ribbing for a reason to fit a baby foot better. So I don't really wanna not do that but I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. So let me know down below if you have any ideas for me. <laughs> I have one more sock whip to share with you. And this is a baby whip, not like a whip for a baby, but like the whip itself has been born today. He's very small. He has a lot of growing to do. <laughs> I am making the Reverie socks 
by Allison Lutz from Pompa Magazine, issue 40, Dreamscape, because my friend Jessica of JS Threads 14 and I are hosting a knit along called the Summer Dreams Knit Along. And so if you want to join in and make anything from that issue of Pom Pom Magazine, you can participate with us and be entered to win prizes. Jess is going to dye some yarn and I'm going to work on some stitch markers and some beautiful pastel -y colors. I think she said she'll have some sparkly yarn, which will be really fun and different. And so just join in on making a pattern from the book. Definitely use the hashtag on Instagram so we can find it. And let me or Jessica know if you want to be added into the Instagram group. We have not had as much interest as we were hoping. So we were a little bummed because both of us are super excited about this issue of Pom Pom Magazine and want to make everything in it. But that's okay. <laughs> so if it's a cal of two people, it will just be me and Jessica doing this knit along. So this yarn that I'm using for the Reverie socks, this is one of the skeins. This and its companion are both from Daisy Stitch Co. See those colors. These are some mystery 50 gram skeins I bought on a sale from her. I'm casting on with the bright colorful color. For my second color, I'm gonna use this white with the same colored speckles. It's kind of hard to see, but the speckles are like the same exact colors of red, blue, green, etc. And so I think they're gonna be a really good contrasting match for each other. So I'm really excited to to cast this on like I said I want to make everything from that magazine but I'm gonna start with the socks since I have a lot of other stuff on my plate I casted that on today because we just started the cal today and we'll be doing an Instagram live tonight so if you're watching this then we already had it but I'm sure there will be more so definitely check me or Jessica out on Instagram my handle is crochet creations I would love to see you over there on my social media so you can cheer me along as I knit this and see hopefully what other people are knitting from this issue of Pom Pom Magazine. And so that's kind of all I've got whip wise that I can show you. I am working on some designs for basic crochet pattern book compilation. So I have four patterns that were accepted for that. And I am currently working on patterns two and three. I'm finishing up two and I'm into three right now. I'm making steady progress. My due date is May 10th to get all four patterns and samples ready and sent off. So once we hit around that time, then you won't hear any more about that. And you'll hear a lot more about what I'm actually working on because I can't share those designs. So I do apologize, but I feel like I still have quite a few projects that I'm working on. So still plenty to share, even if I can't share about that. Speaking about stuff to share about, we have got a lot of yarn. I recently reorganized this cupboard as well as the boxes of yarn that I had strewn about my bedroom so that this area is much more organized and clean and I'm hoping to tackle my older stash that's hidden away in my craft closet right now. I'm hoping to tackle that in an upcoming video so keep an eye out for that if you love reorganizing type content. But I reorganized the space and I already am running out of room because of this past week. Well, this past two weeks, I have been to four local yarn stores in five total trips. So I've got some yarn to show you. And I will say many thanks to my mom for buying some of this yarn for me. I love you. And not just because you buy me yarn, but I always appreciate it. <laughs> I guess we'll start with the yarn she gave me before we even went shopping. So this is Expression Fiber Arts. My baby ripped the tag off. This is the color called The Raven. It's in her Mirage Sport Base. I've never worked with her yarn before, but this is a 70% Superwash Merino, 10% Camel, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Mulberry Silk. So it's soft, it's beautiful, and I don't know what to do with it. But it was left over from a project my mom had. It was, you know, a completely unused gain, so she decided to send it my way and I don't know what to do with it. So if you have any ideas, one skein of sport weight yarn, cashmere, camel, wool, silk, would it work for socks? I'm not sure. In my family, we're a fan of crows, ravens, all that stuff. So it's super fun to have this colorway as an homage to my heritage as a crow. Because that is in fact my maiden name, Emily Crow. So that was super fun that she gave that to me. And then I'll share with you 
we went on a little, I mentioned like a little mini yarn crawl to two different local yarn stores. I got from Uncommon Threads. This is Ching Fiber in the color Flaminglet. These are Merino Singles. So like the texture, oh geez, blowing out. The yellow is not blowing out as much. You can't see it as well, but there's the texture. Definitely different than anything I've worked on before, but I have plans to make my daughter a dress, the Moonglade dress by Roro and Kate. In this, it's got some beautiful lace. And these colors would just look so cute on her. Def definitely the color palette I've given her because it's kind of my color palette right now. It's what I'm really liking. I've never worked with Merino single, single ply yarn before, and so I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it'll be fun and it'll stretch me in a different way. And then I got from Fillery Yarn a lot to hold with well, two hands, just because there's lots of little balls. Ta-da! I'm going to make a plumetis top. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. From also Pom Pom Magazine issue 40. Pop a picture up for you, but this is Pasquale yarn. This is Manada, the fluffy mohair blend. It's mohair, silk, merino, and yak. Super pretty. And then this is the Balayage, which is alpaca and wool blend. So this is my yarn for that project. I'm really excited for it. Again, I like the warm mauve purple. I'm all about that. And so I got that that I am really looking forward to using. I'm making myself finish the referee socks first. And then if I finish those in time for the cow, I will definitely get started on that for our knit along. Last game that I picked up while I was at Fillery Yarn. This is from Lavender Loon Yarn Co. And this is a brand that I've admired. They have some beautiful colorways, but they had a lot of slub yarn at my local yarn store, and I just don't know what to do with slub yarn. So I was responsible and did not buy the beautiful yarn and didn't know what to do with, but now they've got some other bases, and this is their 8020 base fingering, and it's called Flutter, this colorway. Beautiful. It just makes me think of all things spring, flowers, butterflies. Ah, so nice, and I'm really excited to try out their yarn since I have not yet. I go into more details in my yarn haul video so definitely check that out if you haven't seen it yet where you can see my vlog of visiting those two yarn stores as well as me talking about my yarns and these projects so definitely make sure to check those out so that was two weeks ago when my parents and my brother were in town and then last week when we were in Arizona and I went to two different local yarn stores again that vlog will be coming eventually hopefully sooner rather than later I first stopped by Tempe Yarn and Fiber and then I went to Phoenix Knits and I unfortunately didn't see anything there that was really calling me. They had a really interesting selection, but just nothing that I felt like I had to bring home. And then I went back to Tempe Yarn and Fiber because there were some skeins that were rattling around in my brain that I could not get over and I needed to go back and grab. So first trip to Tempe Yarn and Fiber, I grabbed, first of all, this is Dilicious Yarn Camelback, meaning like they have these in a set as you can see and the Del delicious yarn is exclusive to tempe yarn and fiber i don't know if it's like the owner of the store dyes this yarn or i'm not sure exactly the relationship but it's like their in-house yarn so that's super cool and this is let's see it ends up being 1080 yards of fiber this is a fingering weight yarn this is like their speckled base and then their tonal base and this is an 80-20 blend. And I'm just, I'm loving all the warm colors. And I grabbed these because I originally thought that this would make perfect sock yarn, but it also is enough yarn to make like a top or something. So I am not decided on what to make with this. So let me know if you have any great ideas for me because I love this. I could definitely stripe it together for a top or something, or I can make like literally a thousand pairs of socks. And then one other skein I got, from them, also Dilicious Yarn. This is in their 90-10 Targi Nylon base. So it's non-super wash yarn. It's beautiful, it's like a sunset. So pretty. I asked them about what this would be good for and it would be really good for socks. The Targi is very sturdy and it's a little bit, I guess the wool is more curly and crimped compared to merino wool and so that adds some sturdiness to it and makes it a little bit plumper as a fingering weight base and so it should make really good socks so i'm really excited to try a new base i mean it feels nice it feels it feels like it would be a really sturdy base i definitely want to try more non-superwash yarns especially for socks because it's just i love socks 
but then also like it's just fun to try new bases and I'm really grateful that I could try their in-house brand and then I'll show you what I went back and grabbed because Georgia kind of started losing her cool and so I kind of left in a hurry after browsing so much and so I forgot to go back and grab this but this is Sonoran desert dyed fiber look at this beautiful color beautiful lavender this yarn is really special it's 100% BFL so Cheryl Grisset is the plant gatherer and indie dyer so she gathers plants and other things that you can find in the desert like native to her and she uses them to naturally dye yarn so this is dyed with cochineal which I looked it up and it's like a little bug but it's a little bug that has been used for the carmine color, if you are familiar with painting and dyeing and things, the carmine color, which is like a reddish color, she used that in order to dye the skein, which is so cool. And because she uses natural dyes, and it looked like she uses different concentrations and maybe over dyes some things and uses up a bunch of dye for one skein and uses up some more of what's left over for another, but it's not quite the same. There were all sorts of different colors, and there were so many different skeins that use the same cochineal that if I'm pronouncing that right I'm not sure I am cochineal in order to make yarn and so I could have gotten like a beautiful fade of colors that were dyed naturally but I can't buy all the yarn I want so I just bought one that I thought was really beautiful I love this color and surprisingly my husband loves this color too I knew he liked green I knew he liked gray and tan and things like that and he even likes blue and then he randomly told me that he loves the color lavender don't know where that came from but that's super fun so I might end up making him something or using this it says it's a sock base so I mean BFL is pretty sturdy so I might end up using it for a pair of socks for him it's like a contrast I'm not quite sure super beautiful and when there are skeins of yarn that I can't get anywhere else I love to indulge and to support local yarn stores in order to get them so I'm really happy that I found that because I think that's really special some yarn that is dyed with locally sourced material from Arizona when we went so that's super special and then the last skein of yarn this is from sundial design and the reason I didn't grab this my first time visiting Tempe yarn and fiber is because there were lots of different skeins that I loved that again would have worked in a really beautiful fade but I couldn't pick there's so many good colors but then I had this idea to design a pair of socks and this color seemed perfect and I'm not telling you color names because I can't find them on the label I will tell you that so I'm sorry but I'll leave links if I can find them to the actual dyers or to the yarn store this beautiful beautiful tonal is the perfect corally ready pinky ah I love this color so beautiful and this color matches red yucca plants perfectly which I had seen for the first time ever on our trip to Arizona and they were all over the place and they are beautiful I love the color they were so fun to see and I'm going to design a pair of red yucca socks if you like texture if you like lace for your socks then definitely keep an eye out to see what this yarn will become and I will share that with you in some upcoming episodes I'm so excited to cast this on I wound it up as soon as I get you know a couple projects kind of where I need to get them for you know reels and other activity things I'm gonna cast this on so I can get started because I already have a solid idea in my brain of how I want the texture to be but I haven't ever designed a textured sock and I'm not super familiar with textured socks anyway so I think it'll take a few tries to get exactly the thing I'm looking for but I'm so excited to use this yarn for a new pair of socks I love the red yucca plants they are beautiful and so I'm really excited to make a pair of socks to commemorate my time visiting Arizona because I fell in love with it that was a lot of yarn but we are not done with acquisitions so I am a page street ambassador that means that every month I get a book from this publishing company they make a lot of DIY yarny baking type crafting books I get a book from them every month and I just post a little bit about it on my Instagram free book for like basically just sharing it just a little bit I think it's a great trade because I love books and I love crafting and so the two books that I've gotten from them that are recent this is brioche knitting for beginners and beyond by knit graffiti designs if you've been watching for a little while I recently completed my very first brioche 
pattern. It's Fortnite by Knit Curious. I'll pop up a picture up right here, but I love the brioche. It was quite the learning experience, but I had a lot of fun working on it. It was very rhythmic and very soothing and very squishy, and I would love to learn more brioche. I requested to get this book, and I'm super excited to delve in and pick some beautiful patterns to work on from this book. Super cool. I know about knitting and purling and increases and decreases now from working on that shawl, but I feel like I just haven't seen a lot of other types of brioche stitches that aren't within that category. And this goes all the way to like honeycomb stitches and all sorts of interesting things. So I'm excited to see what I can make out of this. The other book that I got is actually kind of yarn adjacent and I'll explain. It's Handmade Clay Jewelry by Clay and Bloom. And I requested this book because I really like working with polymer clay and I definitely want to practice more. I've done a few stitch marker -y things just for fun mostly and and made a few to give us giveaway prizes but I'm excited to learn some new techniques that I can use for making more stitch markers and so I'm super excited I love the ombre I might do something like that for the stitch markers I'm making for our knit along prizes but I'm super excited to see what I can make from that. It'll be so fun. I am in a crafty mood and I'm looking forward to trying some new things. And so I'm grateful for that. I'll pop links to those books that I can find down below. I will label anything that is an affiliate link down below, but most of the things are not. The only thing that I will tell you about is, I, I guess this is part of news and stuff, but I just became an affiliate with Knitpicks. So I'm so excited. I love their products. I just felt the push to expand my business opportunities here in Crochet Creations. And so I applied to be an affiliate with them. Basically, that just means that without any extra cost to the consumers, if you purchase anything from Nitpicks from my link, then I get a commission for referring you to them, which is really awesome. So I'll leave a couple links down below that I feel like are applicable. And so check them out there if you are interested. Thank you so much for any and all of your support for me in these little business ventures as I'm trying to grow my small business. And you'll definitely see more of nitpicks in the future because I just placed a very big order with them for a couple video ideas and other plans that I have in mind for projects. So you'll definitely see an unboxing soon for things that I have purchased from them and you'll see some more projects from them as well. And then as far as like other dreams and plans, other than the knit along that I'm hosting and the designs and things, like I said, the mountains call socks are coming soon too. So keep an eye out for those. I'm just excited for what's coming. I am in a really good mood. It's hard taking a toddler on a trip, especially when there's no family to help. My husband was sleeping during the day as much as he could so that he could go and work at night. So definitely not easy, but for some reason, I still feel very, very refreshed and like ready to tackle the world. Here I come. I have lots of projects in mind, lots of things I'm excited about. I'm finishing up a couple things really soon this week, I think. And then I also have a couple things that I'm starting. And so you'll see some rotation of projects. So next podcast, I should have tons to share with you, which I'm really pumped about. And I have some ideas on things I'm going to start soon-ish, but I've shared a lot of those ideas already. So you can check that out in previous podcasts. But let me know down below what you think I'm going to cast on next as far as a garment. Now that I'm finished with my Brookline blouse, let me know down below what you think I'm going to cast on. Let's see. That should be coming up really soon. And so you should see some fun new projects from me next podcast. I think that's everything, really. I'm not sure if you guys want to hear about non-yarny things. And I try to keep things mostly relevant. But let me know if there's anything you do want to hear from me about life about what I'm reading or watching, about Georgia, things like that. I don't know. I'm happy to share and to connect with you here. That's one of the things I love most about this platform. And so definitely make sure to comment down below, share what you enjoyed seeing from my episode today and what you'd like to see from me. Let me know what you're working on and if there are things that you think I would enjoy to work on. I love chatting with you down there. So definitely connect with me in the comments and feel free to follow me on Instagram too to connect with me over there. I have my pattern shops down below if that's something you're interested in. Yeah, all the links are in the description for things that I've mentioned, but if there's anything that you wanna hear more about or that you don't see linked down there, 
just let me know and I'd be happy to share with you. I hope that you are doing well and as things are moving along and it is springtime and exciting new beginnings, I hope that you are doing well and that you are getting time to make and be creative and to enjoy in the craft that you love. I will see you in the next one. Happy making. Bye.